One word to describe cultural humility for me is is love, actually. If I had to encapsulate cultural humility or the whole concepts of cultural humility, um, it doesn't do it justice, but the word that I think of it is essence. Escuchar. Being. You. Opening. Receive. Compassion. Love. The principles of cultural humility offer one more framework to contribute to what has got to be our ultimate goal, yes? Our ultimate goal is that there will be a sense of equity, a sense of equality, and a, a kind of and, and a kind of respect that we are driving forward. Cultural humility that is, is a multi-dimensional concept and, and certainly um, Melanie Tervalon and I um, conceptualized three dimensions. The first is lifelong learning and critical self-reflection. And in that critical self-reflection it is the understanding of how each of us Every single one of us is a complicated, multi-dimensional human being. Each of us comes with our own histories and stories, our heritage, our point of view. You're looking at me now. I am very fair-skinned. When I was a little girl, my hair was blonde. My eyes are blue. People often tried to call me anything but African-American. I have a history. My identity is rooted in that history. My parents gave me the knowledge of my own social identity, and my own experience in life has created that. I get to say who I am. The second tenet, uh, after uh, self-reflection and ongoing lifelong learning and development, is, is this notion that we must mitigate the power imbalances, to recognize and mitigate the power imbalances that are inherent often in our clinician um, patient or clinician client or um, service provider community dynamics. And then finally the, the piece that I would offer that Jan and I feel people often either don't read or don't like, which is, and the institution has to model these principles as well. An African-American nurse is caring for a middle-aged Latina woman several hours after the patient had undergone surgery. A Latino physician on a consult service approached the bedside and noting the moaning patient commented to the nurse that the patient appeared to be in a great deal of post-operative pain. The nurse summarily dismissed his perception, informing him that she took a course in nursing school in cross-cultural medicine and knew that Hispanic patients overexpressed the pain that they're feeling. The Latino physician had a difficult time influencing the perspective of this nurse, who focused on her self-proclaimed cultural expertise. It was curious to this Latino physician, who first of all was Latino, not like all, um, in his case, not like all Mexican-Americans know everything there is to know about Mexican-American patients. That wasn't it. but. He might have been a resource for that African-American nurse in that moment um, that she didn't feel like she needed, again, because she had bought into this notion of competence, of cultural competence. The distinction between cultural humility and cultural competence was that we were in a, in a process and a relationship that had many other layers to it, and that we were less comfortable with, this, with even the term of competence. 
in a way that I think people understand well and that it implies, especially for people who are providers and are trained in academia, that you are then all knowing and all powerful. And we felt like that was not what was happening for us as we were learning from community and understanding in a, in a very practical way how families were coming to the hospital and feeling as if they really were not being heard from their own heritage and history and how that impacted what they came to the hospital with that we, could, we didn't know anything about hadn't even a clue about. For us, this is part of the humility piece of it, getting to understand that, not trying to humiliate you, not trying to make you feel bad, trying to help us all understand that there, that life is like this, and to, in a certain sense, be really happy about not knowing. In April of 1992, in the wake of the Los Angeles riots, following the initial not guilty verdict of the police officers accused of beating Mr. King, the Children's Hospital Oakland community was compelled to meet in a series of highly charged sessions to expose and critique our own patterns of institutional racism, injustice, and inequity. My name is Dr. Melanie Turvalon, and I am Director of Multicultural Affairs here at Children's Hospital Oakland. I want to thank everybody for coming to what is a celebration for me of this year. Jan and I had the good fortune, really, to be together in the same place when this work was evolving. Jan and I, while we're several years difference in age, are both African-American women and both raised by women who were teachers. And we come out of that, and, and fathers who were working men who come out of that Southern tradition and who participated fully in the civil rights movement in the way that meant that they made sacrifices and their children made sacrifices and they taught us about those sacrifices and raised us each in ways to understand that we were here to serve. 